Morning, Glory America. Bonjour. Hi, Canada. I'm Hugh Hewitt. I'm not there. I'm in Wyoming interviewing a bunch of would-be congressional candidates and members of Congress. They're actually candidates already. But my buddy, Kurt Schlichter, has agreed to get up early and come down to the uh, the Studio West and announce to you what actually happened at Mar-a-Lago and in the deposition. Why in the world was the president invoking the Fifth Amendment in a civil proceeding? We'll let Kurt figure that out for you. He's the actual trial lawyer. I just play one on television. Take it away, Kurt. Thank you, Hugh Hewitt. I am Kurt Schlichter. Guest host here for the Hugh Hewitt radio program. I'm a retired United States Army infantry colonel. I am a noted Los Angeles trial lawyer, as Hugh Hewitt noted. I am senior columnist at townhall.com. You probably want to go to townhall.com right now and read my latest opus, Afghanistan and the Collapse of Normal's Faith in the System. The, uh, the hypothesis is the disaster one year ago in Afghanistan really woke up a lot of normal people. Uh, but if they weren't awake already, they're sure awake now after this Mar-a-Lago nonsense. And it is nonsense. Look, I, I, I see a lot of uh, reasonable, helpful, smiling, happy people out there. Um, Man, they're saying things to the effect of, well, we, we, we need to see what documents they found and we need to, we need to get all the facts. And, uh, you, you, you couldn't be more wrong. No, there's, there's no need to do any of that because this, uh, raid by the FBI and the, uh, uh, regime's Department of Justice is absolute. And I, uh, Dwayne, your finger needs to be hovering over the dump button for me. It is absolute garbage. There is no set of facts, no circumstances in which this is okay. There is no set of facts, no web of evidence that could ever make this nonsense all right. You don't send guys with guns to rifle through your political opponent's stuff and their wife's undies. Okay? The idea of it is so repugnant to anybody who has any sense of right and wrong, any sense of propriety and a love of the Constitution, any respect for things like norms, which are quaint. I'm not sure we have norms anymore. I'm not sure we have any customs or practices anymore. I think it's just the raw exercise of power. And I got to say, guys, you're not going to like how that works out. I think you got a lot more to hide. I'm just saying. And I don't think that Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell, when we take back the House and the Senate, as we will, and we're going to be talking about that today, because right now we're in that designated period where Biden's winning, right? Because inflation's coming down, according to, well, cut number 11, uh, Dina Titus of Nevada, cut number 11. Well, a lot of the economists are saying that uh, inflation is already coming down. Gas prices are coming down. So I believe that you will be able to feel it. <laughs> Unemployment is very low now. People are back to work. So that's not the definition of a recession. And uh, so people will feel that every day. And I'm optimistic about it. It's here in Nevada, when you have the monsoon season, people know that they need help when it comes to climate change. What? You know, that couldn't be more of a word salad if she sprinkled croutons on it. What the heck did that? What was that? Yeah, You know, inflation's coming down and beware of monsoon season. Now, I don't want to be picky, but I am a trial lawyer. So things like facts and evidence do matter to me. If Nevada has a monsoon season already. How is their climate change doing it? Because it's already a season. Oh, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. I'm pretending that this stuff's supposed to make sense. Instead of just be words for stupid people to listen to and go, yeah, that. There's a lot of stupid going on, folks. I mean, an incredible amount. Inflation is coming down. It's literally not coming down. Okay, you know, gas was six thirty a gallon about two months ago in Los Angeles, where I live. It's six thirty now. Okay, I know this because I actually fill up my fine German touring sedan with gasoline, which costs an arm and a leg and somebody else's leg. 
who do these people think they're fooling? This it, now look, we're we're in the phase of the election where it's the Joe Biden comeback. There's, it's always like this, right? This is the comeback. Oh, Democrats are Democrats are rushing ahead. Have you seen the polls? Well, I've, I've seen the polls for the last fifteen years, and uh, gosh, they always seem to they always seem to say what the regime wants them to say. It's, it's totally weird. So, like as Hugh is uh, uh, frequently points out, you know, you got the uh, Wisconsin poll that had Trump seventeen points behind. He ends up point six points behind when the actual election happens. So. Yeah, this is this is when th- this is where the narrative is. Joe Biden's back. He's got his aviator glasses on. He's relatively conscious. He's 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 sc- inflation is down. And look at Trump. Trump's in trouble. Trump's in trouble. He had classified material. Yeah, yeah. Trump had uh, Trump had classified material. He's got the. Uh, He's got the single integrated operating plan. It's dog-eared. He's got little post-its in it where he's making notes. Because you know who's a detail-oriented guy? Donald Trump, a voracious reader. Oh, and then there was some other idiot, and I forget which one it is. I I, I know why I say idiot in the media. I have to be more specific. Uh, he's like, Donald Trump could have had a list of all our double agents in in, in Russia. Oh, you mean like the knock list from from Mission Impossible? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, come on. Yeah. Donald Trump. I, I just see Donald Trump. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Could I uh, get the uh, the list of all our double agents? Well, here you go. Here you go, Mr. President. I just happen to have it here. He just slips it in his jacket. You know, moves his very long tie, slips in his pocket. I'm going to take this home and uh, I'm going to put it in Melania's sock drawer. Because... There's reasons. Yeah, and then what, what, what's the other thing? He's going to, let's say, he's going to sell it to Putin or he's going to sell it to the Saudis or he's sell it to Putin because reasons and also stuff and uh, you're a transphobe. I, here's my question. It's a que- it, It's like the eternal question that I deal with whenever I guest host here on the Hugh Hewitt radio program. Are they stupid or do they think we are stupid? Let's see what Dana Milbank thinks, because because he he he's right up that alley. Uh, uh, cut fifteen. Look, uh, this has been a horrific week in the sense of the the threat to the rule of law. I mean, Republicans with their violent talk, actual violence, have lit a bonfire yes. in the threat of the rule of law. Uh, earlier, uh, Governor Hogan was saying he thinks this week was a win for Donald Trump. I think it's exactly the opposite. We can talk about them motivating Donald Trump's base. Guess what? They were already motivated. Mm-hmm. But what's happening now is they are putting Donald Trump on the ballot uh, because of the way the Republicans have all uh, grasped around him the way they're going to knock out nine of ten of the House Republicans who voted for impeachment uh, because of the Dobbs decision. All right, I can't listen to this idiot anymore. Hearings. First of all, it is a tragedy that we've knocked out nine of ten Republicans who voted for impeachment. We need to make it ten of ten. Every single one of them needs to be sent off to wherever you send uh, traitors, suck ups, and saps. So that's another thing. I love that Republicans are embracing violence. Oh, if Republicans were embracing violence, punk, you'd know it. The second of all, don't tell me about the rule of law. I'm looking at I'm looking at, uh, uh, you know, the Twitter machine. And there's a fo- uh, there's some photos of like 500 illegal aliens marching across the border. You know, we I just saw a statistic this morning in 2016, something like 29 people in San Diego died of fentanyl. This year it's going to be 817. So you little weasel, don't tell me about the rule of law. Don't tell me about the rule of law when your gal Felonia Millhouse von Pantsuit gets subpoenaed and then promptly arrests or erases all her emails. Why well, I'm glad to see the classified materials uh uh, uh, not legal to have again. Oh, great. But see, you don't get to change the rules. Not, not, not at your convenience. They changed it once. It's okay. I know because James Comey, who had unpeachable ethics and integrity, he told me. 
So that's the rule. You don't get to change it back. I don't care if Trump had classified material. I, I, I do not care. And I do not care if the liberals care that I don't care. It's time to get tough. It's time to get hard. It's time to play for keeps. And that's what we're doing here on the Hugh Hewitt radio program. I'm guest host Kurt Schlichter. Giving those media matters saps lots to write about. And I'll be right back. I'm Kurt Schlichter, guest hosting for the great Hugh Hewitt. I am uh, joined by author of the new thriller, The Neighborhood, Matthew Betley. He's a former Marine. And um, I thought, because Marines are very linear folks, I thought uh, I would... Uh, I would play the vice president's whatever the hell that was <laughs> and get his reaction. Okay, you're you're a Marie. What do you think? I I'm just glad I know where I stand in this current century. <laughs> I I'd like to stand outside it throwing rocks at it. Oh my gosh. What that was, was that? I I hadn't heard that one yet. That's just enough. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing, but uh I guess the, uh, the the guy who's got the big happy right now is Joe Biden because we don't dare impeach him. Why? Why is that? Because, yeah, because we don't dare so impeach well. him with this 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 cat is the uh, the the follow on. Hey, uh, your your new book, uh, newest bestseller, The Neighborhood, came out last week. Tell us a little about it. Oh, absolutely. So first, uh, for the listeners, I actually wanted to, uh, you know, who have heard me on your show, uh, I wrote a series of action thrillers in the Logan West series. But for this, what I wanted to do was write something new, a standalone thriller to bring in new readers. So what I did was I thought, you know, a few years ago, uh, I was standing outside. Every year we have uh, what's called Fire Truck Santa, where the local, I think, I think that's what they call it with local fire trucks and they, they bring in all the fire trucks. They have somebody dressed up as Santa Claus and they collect toys for toys for time. And as I was standing out there in the cold a few years ago, I thought, what if these guys were bad guys and wanted to take all of us hostage in our neighborhood? And that was how the who, idea who hasn't had this, that thought. Exactly. So that's how the idea for this book was, was created. And what it is, it's a story about a gated community 40 miles west of D.C. that comes under siege in the middle of one night, turns into a super modern take on a spy thriller with atypical characters. You've got a suburban dad, a, a, a 17-year-old female high school track star, and they have to figure out how to band together with their neighbors to survive this, what turns into a truly horrifying evening. And uh, it's, it's a very intense, wild ride. And I wanted to give new readers and listeners basically the Bentley experience that I'm known for with my other books, but in a more contained environment. Well, Matthew Bentley, how does one get from Fallujah to, to the bestseller list? Well, well it, it's, it's actually been a very long, long journey. Uh, uh, the short of it is, as a lot of people know, I'm a recovering alcoholic, uh, 13 and a half years sober. And I was fortunate to use the military's outpatient rehab program before I left the Marine Corps to get sober. And I was on vacation, uh, sober six months at the time, and I was reading this boring bestseller. And I got so viscerally angry because the protagonist was so tactically inept that I turned to my now wife and said, oh, my God, this guy should die because he's so bad. <laughs> and I, I could write a better book than this. And I obsessed about it for a full year before I sat down and, and uh, wrote my first book, Overwatch, which came out in 2016 and was a Military Times top 10 book of the year and nominated for Best Thriller of the Year. And since then, the, the career has kind of taken off. I'm very fortunate and blessed to kind of be in this position. You know, uh, Matt Bentley, of course, I write the uh, Kelly Turnbull series of conservative action novels, uh, military guy too, obviously. And uh, the... You know, do you think, and of course, we got guys like Jack Carr and Sean Parnell out there writing uh, military thrillers, uh, or, or just thrillers. I wouldn't call ours military. What do you think that veterans bring to the table that, you know, other guys who write in the genre might not? Well, they, they bring authenticity, first off. Uh, you know, when I write, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, it, it, it dep they bring authenticity, but they also bring a sense of esprit de corps, the camaraderie you experience uh, in the military. But specifically, at least in my books, 
I'm not trying to tell people all about the weaponry, things like that. There's a certain line you don't want to cross, but I am going to try to tell people how to effectively use them, uh, their realistic capabilities. So, so you bring that sense of realism, especially in my very long action sequences. I, 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 if you look at movies, a good metaphor, you've got Michael Bay on one end of the spectrum and then Peter Berg on the other end of the spectrum. And I kind of place my thrillers right in the middle. Well, Matt Bentley, I've, I've kind of had similar experiences I had uh, in uh, one of my books. I think it was uh, Collapse. Uh, they've, they've got to blow up a bridge. And I was uh, spending time talking to a demolition expert. And what I was seeking was how to not tell people how to blow up a big bridge, make it seem realistic without actually doing it. Do you find yourself having to hold back on the things that you know or the things that you research just because you don't want to give some lunatic an idea? And there are a lot of uh, lunatics out there. Well, it, it depends on the research. If, if, For example, I've had a nuclear weapon, especially in my first book, Overwatch, and I'm not going to tell people how to build a nuclear weapon, but I am going to tell them. Well, look, if happen. you want to know how to build a nuclear weapon, you just simply go over to the Trump place, rifle through uh, Melania's shoe closet. And I'm sure there's, uh, you know, a couple workbooks there that uh, Trump took for some light reading because he's a voracious reader. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, look, you, you like 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 me, you understand about classified material and stuff. And I'm just a little curious because I was informed by all the smart people who are now talking about the rule of law uh, that uh, possessing classified material on, say, a server you have in somebody's toilet uh, is not really a crime. But apparently now, now it's the worst thing possible. It seems a little odd to me. Just well, saying. I yeah, of course, because it it only it only matters to the left on which party's in power. That that's the real indicator as to whether or not class you know compromising classified material is actually a threat. Depends on your political party. Well, see, now, the the thing about you, Matt, and we talk a lot, is that you're not political the way I am. Okay, I I'm always involved in this stuff, and you're always involved in you know trying to write. The, the very best uh, thrillers that you can, like The Neighborhood. So, and you have to say it seven times. You have to say The Neighborhood seven times. That's a rule on Hugh Hewitt. Um, but you're like a normal person. You're, you're not involved in politics in the way a lunatic like I am. How do you feel when you see them raiding the, uh, the, the opponent of the current president, the guy who's most likely to run for president, and they're, they're sending guys with guns to his house to go through his stuff? How does that make you feel as, like, a normal person? Uh, well, it makes me feel like if they, they're going to do that to the, the former president, then they'll do that to anyone. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's rather surreal, especially when you hear people say, well, this is over a document dispute, uh, you know, and that they had been cooperating with the DOJ. Uh, it's, it's just uh, it's a, as someone, as I put out on Twitter when I heard about this, Banana Republic ain't just a clothing store anymore. Nice and, and true. I think uh, I, I think among regular folks, uh, this is a turning point. This is where people say, "Wait a minute." You know, I'm not a political scientist. I was barely awake during my civics class in high school, but this isn't right at all. No, I agree. It's, it, I feel like we're living, especially the last two years, in some sort of alternate reality. But then as I was waiting to go on air, I, I turned on the news, which is always a bad thing to do. Oh, apparently. don't ever do that. Uh, I, well, so apparently they're going to cut the administration's going to come out after Biden gets back from his vacation and say how he's winning more than any other president and everything's going rosy and there's nothing to see here. Oh. <laughs> don't believe your lying eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have your, have your, uh, has inflation improved for you and your family? Oh, definitely. It's amazing how uh, here's a great, a realistic example for people. Uh, we've got a uh, a dying air conditioning system uh -huh. and I got a quote on it. And the company, which is a real reputable company, said, yep, basically it's six thousand dollars more because of the supply chain crisis and inflation. So six thousand dollars more thanks to this administration. And that's a hard, realistic data point. I have to draw on. Well, but I was told by the regime media that uh, Aviator Glasses Biden, 
was uh, he's winning. He's doing. Yeah. Aren't, aren't you excited about uh, uh, 87,000 new IRS agents to take on those 700 billionaires in America? I know I am. I, I'm almost as excited about him as apparently people in his own party are for him running in 2024. Oh, that's that, that's true. A lot of them are going, he, he's not going to run. He's he, you may not have noticed, but he's completely senile. He's uh, he's crusty. And uh, he, it, 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 I just, you know, guys like you and I who served overseas in ugly places, I think we have a different perspective on America. I don't think we take it for granted the way a lot of these knuckleheads who've never been anywhere but uh, college and New York City or Washington, D.C. or San Francisco do. No, I, I agree. Uh, and the, the funny part about it and, and the part that people who would disagree with me probably hate me for is I actually want to have a debate. I've always, you know how reasonable I've always tried to be. To be yeah, that's one of your that big faults. <laughs> exactly. I try and be reasonable. And yeah, I'm against that. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not having any of that. But look, uh, uh, look, we got uh, uh, we got about 30 seconds. Tell us uh, where you we can get your newest thriller, The Neighborhood. Anywhere books are available, especially Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, Apple, uh, Apple Books, all, all of them. Uh, it's available in hardcover, uh, ebook, and audiobook. Our and coloring is- book for your fellow Marines, which is exactly e- exactly nice. No, I I blurbed your book. I'm a big supporter. My wife's a big fan. Go get Matthew Bentley's new thriller, The Neighborhood. You will not regret, and you will not regret sticking around here for Selena Zito. Next on the Hugh Hewitt Radio Program. I am pleased to welcome one of my Pennsylvania homies, because that's where uh, that's where the Schlichters hail from. Selena Zito. Hi, Selena. How you doing? Oh, good morning, Sunshine. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Look, you got to I'm going to get right to it. You've got a new column up. It's a very important column. And it talks about the Pennsylvania Senate race. And I have been told by all the smart people in the media that uh, Dr. Oz has zero chance. You don't see it that way, do you? Well, no, I don't. I mean, you, you even take out the two candidates. In Pennsylvania, zero chance for a Republican just isn't the reality in 2022. I mean, this is a state. In in the last two elections, despite Donald Trump not winning here in 2020, went very red uh, down ballot. Uh, in our state, Republicans won two out of the three statewide row offices, by the way, with candidates that had zero money and nobody knew. Uh, and, and that's kind of a big deal in seats that Republicans haven't held for over a decade. Uh, they also won two congressional seats that they were supposed to lose by double digits. Uh, And state house and state um, um, Senate seats that, again, they were supposed to lose the majorities in. And then in 2021, that uh, sort of spread red, if you will, um, got even larger um, in the municipal and judicial races across my, my home state. So even if you take out the two candidates, zero chance is just not a reality. Well, Selena, uh, Selena Zito, your new uh, uh, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette article uh, in Travels Across Pennsylvania, Mehmet Oz looks to capture anti-elite sentiment. You, you know, you, you're, you're seeing that race very differently. Um why are you seeing it so differently than the mainstream media folks who have uh, who, who have totally written off Dr. Oz in favor of, uh, you know, John Fetterman? Well, you know, I leave my desk. <laughs> <laughs> Step one, That's report. One. <laughs> um, I get out there and report. And and I think that that there is a lot of uh, reporters that have bought into this mystique of john fetterman creating is there a mystique he looks like shrek uh uh anyway <laughs> they've created him to be this sort of exotic character that looks like what they envision a trump supporter looks like therefore the, he's going to get democrats and trump voters now um, oz's biggest challenge has been um, he has a lot of negatives. However, 
he's very good on the stump. He's very uh, compassionate and, and curious. Those are qualities that are appealing to a voter, in particular a swing voter. I mean, there's three things he has to be able to overcome in the next couple months. He has this to help solve fun. He just has to. People have this perception that if you are a celebrity, if you're not putting in your money, then why should they donate money? Well, that is a good you point. Just, you have to put your own money in. You also cannot rely on entities like the RNC or the state party to do your grassroots. You have to have good Pennsylvania-based people to help get out the vote. Is he doing and, that? Um, I have put that question to the to the campaign. Um, I've not gotten an answer yet, but I only asked them last night. Ah. And finally, and most importantly, most importantly, you have to have a good absentee ballot slash mail-in ballot program, one that is very comprehensive, uh, that that has a, a, you know an uh, impact everywhere within the state, and this is how you. Um, combat a lot of holes that Republicans face when it faces when they face Democrats that are just, you know, sort of swimming in money. You have to have an absentee ballot slash mail in ballot program. Does he have that program, Selena Zita? I, I, again, that's a question that I posed late last night. So stay tuned for those answers. Uh, who uh, real quick, Selena Zito, who is running Dr. Oz's campaign? Is it Pennsylvanians? And do you think he's going to win? I mean, I, I think that this is a jump ball. I would favor the Republican in this race. Um, I would favor Oz in this race, having seen Fetterman at the rally last Friday in Erie. What's he like? Uh, um, he's He's struggling. He's certainly not. I mean, he was always incredibly awkward uh, when it came to campaigning. He was much better one on one. But there's an expectation that he's supposed to do these grandiose rallies. And he's uh, not doing so, it, apparently. No. Selena Zito, thank you very much for that insight from Pennsylvania, an insight you're not going to get from the regime media. I'm Kurt Schlicker. This is the Hugh Hewitt radio program. We got a lot more to come, so stick around for Governor in the great state of. New York. He's back in the New York group. He's also in the House of Representatives. Representative Lee Zeldin. How you doing, Representative Zeldin? I'm doing great, Kurt. It's good to be with you. Well, it's nice to have another Army colonel on board with me. Uh, we uh, we field grades need to hang together. And uh, if we don't hang together, we're certainly going to hang apart. Let Before we get to talk about the uh, New York governor race uh, and how we can help you out, uh, Let's talk about what happened last week. What is the feeling in the House of Representatives about this outrageous attack on uh, President Biden's most likely political opponent by an arm of the federal government? Oh, it's outrage coming from all over the country. And what's interesting, it's not just people who are strong supporters of President Trump. It's coming from people who are saying, hey, listen, I don't support President Trump, but and they're expressing outrage. So I think what they, the biggest mistake here, really miscalculating the blowback of the average American, not the partisan, never Trumper who gives impunity, ends justify the means, whatever you need to do to torture President Trump as much as possible, which is, by the way, a shrinking minority right now of our country, because the average American moves on. And they care about inflation and our border and illegal immigration and more. I think that they really underestimated just how large the majority would be of Americans who would say this does not pass any type of a smell test. And uh, they're really turning their ire towards the DOJ and FBI and the Biden administration on this. Well, Representative Lee Zeldin, you, you, of course, are a member of the House of Representatives and the uh, Republican caucus, which hopes to uh, grow in November, and I think it's very likely that we will take the House while you take the uh, governorship in Albany. Uh, what are the other Republican congressmen saying, particularly the soft ones? Because there are a lot of soft ones who are saying, well, we need, to, we need to see what the facts are. And, and of course, there are no facts that would justify any of this. What, what, is, what is the feeling within the caucus? Well, I mean, I've heard a lot of members 
speaking out with with outrage. I'm not hearing uh, much from the Democrats at all. As a matter of fact, to the extent you do hear anything from congressional Democrats, they're helping to provide cover for this decision without them having any of the facts. They've signed on to that and justify the means approach here. Uh, there, there needs to be a an outcry by everybody who is going to be part of. I believe that there will be a Republican majority in Congress come January, and for that voter who's out there, they want to know that things are going to be different. That 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 this is actually going to be a check and balance on another branch of government. That it's not going to be a go along to get along approach. That if you change the gavel of the House Judiciary Committee from Jerry Nadler to Jim Jordan, Americans want to know, what are you going to get for that? And whether it, comes, whether it relates to Hunter Biden and all of that scandal regarding the Biden administration, or it's what we saw play out last week, Americans want to know that with that power entrusted upon you, that you're going to provide that check and balance. So I think it's incumbent on, on everyone to speak truth to power here. Uh, and call call it out for what it is here, which so far does not pass any smell test. Well, Representative Lee Zeldin, before we get to your candidacy for governor in New York, I, I got to point out that, uh, you know, out here in the hinterlands, a lot of us are greatly disappointed with the uh, uh, Republican leadership and its failure to aggressively push back. How can we be sure that they're going to do this? Now, you understand that they need to, but... You know, should should we believe that this time it's going to happen? Uh, I have known Jim Jordan for many, many years. I am confident with Jim Jordan as chairman of the House Judiciary Committee that he would do absolutely everything in his power uh, to make Kurt satisfied that <laughs> he is holding this administration accountable. Uh, it's you know, there's there's a responsibility incumbent upon more than just Jim Jordan here, but that's going to be a pretty powerful shift in that balance of power inside of the House of Representatives with control of the House Judiciary Committee changing over. And I think that other members need to take notes, talk to Congressman Jordan, uh, and in many respects follow his lead because he and his team are very sharp, astute, and strong when it comes to this. Well, Congressman Zeldin, you are running for governor in the Empire State. Your governor there, and you and I have kind of a disagreement over whose governor is worse. Mine's Governor Hairstyle here in California. Uh, yours is just an atrocity in New York. But let's let's put aside who has the worst governor. They both have to go. Are you going to be able to take her out in a blue state? I'm not in this race to come in second. We're campaigning our tails off. Uh, I'm actually heading right now back into New York City. I was, uh, I've been campaigning a lot with a lot of Democratic groups. Now that November 8th is getting closer, uh, we found more and more and more opportunities to be able to do that. And whether it was, ye you know, yesterday marching in the, uh, the Dominican Day Parade in Manhattan, or I was in the Jamaican Jerk Festival in Queens, or with the Jewish voters in Brighton Beach and Kew Garden Hills and Flushing, and the Asian voters in Chinatown and Sunset Park in Brooklyn, inside of New York City, we need 29% of the vote. And there actually are conservative pockets inside of New York City, Staten Island, Brighton Beach, Bay Ridge, Middle Village, and elsewhere. And then there's also that coalition building effort. New York City is very diverse, and I have found that a lot of Republicans have not gone into these communities in a long time. And I've also found that Democrats don't spend enough time there either. And my message to these voters is, voters are, don't let anybody take your vote for granted. And I'm finding when I talk to them, they care about crime and public safety, the economy, freedom, the, the quality of education in our schools. They align very much with conservative principles, but we have to show up. And that's why we're working so hard to get it done. Again, I'm not in this race to come in second. I'm feeling good about where this is heading right now, but we can't take anything for granted. And for anybody out there anywhere in America who thinks that this is about jumping on some board to ride in a wave, that is not this moment. We have to create the wave by working hard. Well, how can we help you, Congressman Zeldin? 
Zeldin for New York dot com Z E L D I N F O R. It's all one word. Uh, Zeldin for New York dot com, and uh, we're on social media. People can sign up to to volunteer. You can donate five dollars. You can sign up for our uh, uh, weekly updates. Get on, involved in the conversation on social media. We're across all different kinds of social media platforms. We need everybody to be engaged. New York has sixty two counties. We have some very red counties. We have some very blue counties uh, and purple. We need everybody everywhere to help. Tell everyone you know. And across this country, anybody who's eligible to vote, tell them it's not just your right to vote. This is your duty to vote. This is your obligation, your responsibility. We need all people who think like us to get involved in this race, not sit it out. Now, Congressman Zeldin, uh, I think that the most underreported story of this cycle is a political story is not whether or not Trump will run or whether Republicans are ahead or behind. It is the shift in Hispanic American voters to the right, to the Republican Party. This, I think, is a game changer. The uh, Democrats were relying on a permanent Hispanic uh, voter pool, and Hispanic Americans are just saying, wait, we like family, flag, and freedom. Uh, we're, we're finding a home in the Republican Party. Are you seeing that in New York? We will win the Hispanic vote in New York. And yesterday— Wow, that's a bold up, statement. We will win the Hispanic vote in New York. When I was at the, the Dominican Day Parade in New York City yesterday, I had a very similar experience than when I, uh, from when I was at the, the Dominican Day Parade in the Bronx a couple weeks ago. And when I marched in the route, there would be people on the side, because we have the signs, Zeldin for governor, and people would give the thumbs up and they would say, I'm voting for you. And one might think that that's just uh, in a way a greeting because they see that I'm running for well, well New Yorkers are New Yorkers are famously non uh, not not necessarily polite when they don't like someone so if they actually say well, I'm going to vote for you you can probably take it to the bank well I'll tell you what was really striking was when I was going to the side and I did this again yesterday and I noticed this first a couple weeks ago when I was at the Dominican Day Parade in the Bronx when I was going to the side and actually engaging with all these people as soon as I walked over there they were talking about Jose Alba, the, yep. the guy who's the bodega worker who was slapped the yep. murder charge and sent to Rikers Island by Alvin Bragg. They're talking about uh, anti cashless bail, anti Kathy Hochul. They were fired up, they were informed, they were engaged, and it was a pretty big sign that we are definitely going in the right direction with this group. Uh, Representative Lee Zeldin. You know, obviously, you are monitoring the situation. You're a, a Army Intel officer, so of course, you're looking at metrics. What do the polls say, and what's your strategy for taking this uh, seat in no, uh, the, the taking the state house in November? Most recent poll that came out was the New York Post a few days ago, and it showed an eight point gap, forty eight forty. What we found is that Kathy Hochul's favorability number is just stuck. She just does not become any more popular with each passing day. But what does happen is that people who don't like her, the people who don't approve of the job she's doing, people who feel like the state is heading in the wrong direction, that these numbers are increasing. Biden's numbers are worse. People who feel like the country is in the wrong direction, that number gets higher. Uh, we just need to keep working hard. Well, that's great news. How can we help you? we got about five seconds. Zeldin for New York. Great to be with you. Thank you, Representative Lee Zeldin, Army Colonel. And I'm Colonel Kurt Schlicker, retired, here, singing for the great Hugh Hewitt. We'll be right back.